Hi folks, welcome to Pack Daddy NFL. Today, we're doing a Buffalo Bills seven round mock draft. So I actually wanna do something a little bit different. Um, seeing as how we don't have this full first round mock draft that takes about an hour, and in those mock drafts, I usually have to be very short and to the point because I've got 32 to get through, and the difference between taking one minute to do it and taking 10 minutes to do it is the difference between like a half hour and five hours or whatever, four, three, two, a bunch of hours. Um, but with the seven round mocks, especially with teams that don't have a billion picks, I think I might be doing the Jaguars next. Maybe I won't because there's <laughs> too many picks and I'm short on time. But I have the opportunity to elaborate a bit. So I want to just kind of give you my view of the Buffalo Bills and the information I was using to make the picks. Now, it might be a bad idea because I might lose you before we even get started, but I just want to kind of poke around a little bit, show you what I'm looking at from my perspective, and feel free, Bills fans, to jump in the comment section and let me know what it is you think I'm getting wrong. And for the record, I have the Bills winning the division, so anything negative that you feel that I'm saying, understand that I really like your team. By the way, let me just say this real quick, and I'm not just pandering. The Buffalo Bills are my second favorite team. I had a uh, roommate in college that was a Bills fan. He uh, took me to uh, two different Bills games. We drove from Whitewater, Wisconsin, all the way to Buffalo, New York, to go to a Bills and Miami Dolphins game. We hung out in the mud lot, which is one of the most fun experiences I've ever had in my life. Best buffalo wings I've ever eaten in my life at about 2 o'clock in the morning before that game. The guys in that lot were just... I think the mud lot's gone, isn't it? I don't know. But... It was the most fun experience we ever had. We drove out there and instantly, hey, come over here. I'm so used to being in the mid Midwest where every time you say you're a Packers fan, outside of Wisconsin, everybody hates you. Everybody out there was like, I love the Packers, man. My kid loves Brett Favre. It was just great people, great football, great food, fantastic. So now that we got the pandering out of the way, let's take a quick look at what it is I'm looking at as an outsider when I look at the Buffalo Bills. All right, so first things first, um, I want to give a shout out to LeBron913 as well as Finchie in the comment section. I actually thought it was the same guy because it's so rare. I, I've only had two people say, hey, can you do this mock next? And it happened to both be Bills fans. So Finchie and LeBron913 both jumping in and saying, hey, man, um, be cool if you did a Bills one next. So here we are. Um, <clears throat> I want to start with, um, I guess, the draft history, just to kind of make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, so, you know, one of the biggest mistakes I make all the time is, hey, why did you draft that guy? We just drafted this guy. And I said, oh, shoot, I forgot. So this past draft class, we got A.J. Epinesa, which is important because edge rusher is not the lowest on the priority list. And it's not that we can't get another edge rusher because we've got two guys that are very, very old. One of them might not even be playing in 2021 after this draft. So we got AJ Epinesa plus a really old guy. Zach Moss in the third round. Again, important because that's one of the question marks. I think I even said in my last mock, um, maybe we should get a running back. I forgot about Zach Moss. Uh, Gabriel Davis, wide receiver. We did get Jake from, so if there's any question about possibly getting sort of a later round guy that we can kind of groom as a backup or whatever, that's taken care of. Kicker, which maybe I should start looking at that more. I, I need to start looking at that for teams. Uh, Isaiah Hodgins, wide receiver. Dane Jackson, corner. Also, though, last year, Ed Oliver, just the early round guys. Cody Ford, which is going to be important coming up. Uh, Devin Singletary who's the guy that I was kind of aiming at when I said I'm not so sure I'm set, and then uh, Dawson, Dawson Knox, tight end, Foshin Joseph, blah, 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 right? So that's kind of the the guys we just got that we got to keep in mind, as well as some guys that are kind of young, and maybe we don't want to give up on them quite yet. Uh, some other information here. Um, I don't want to go through everybody, but I've got a depth chart for the Buffalo Bills Guys that are undrafted free agents in 2021, which means they need a contract. Otherwise, they're not even playing this year. So Isaiah McKenzie and Andre Roberts at wide receiver. Tyler Croft, the tight end. Matt Barkley at quarterback. Um, Yeldon and Taiwan Jones at running back. Uh, DeMarco at fullback. You got Deion Dawkins at left tackle is going to need a contract. Daryl Williams at guard. Evan Boehm. Bam. Bame. 
whatever. Uh, Brian Winters and John Feliciano, as well as Ty Nasecki, right tackle. Um, defense isn't quite as bad. There's only Brian Cox, Vincent Taylor, Trent Murphy, which is the guy that I'm talking about, may not even be playing because Trent Murphy is currently 30 years old. We'll see if we decide to get him another contract. Probably not, though, because we have A.J. Epinesa. So we can go with Jerry Hughes and A.J. Epinesa, but Jerry Hughes, he is 32 years old, and he'll be in the last year of his contract in 2021. We also have Mario Addison, um, but Mario Addison is also 33. He's, he's a, he has a contract for a while, but you know we can probably dump him anytime. Um, Josh Norman probably isn't going to be back in 2021. Levi Wallace, Dean Marlowe, but... Guys that are in their final year in 2021, there's quite a few. Jerry Hughes, Harrison Phillips, Quentin Jefferson, Vernon Butler, Tremaine Edmonds, Tyler Matakevich, Tredavious White, Teron Johnson, EJ Gaines, Micah Hyde, Saron Neal. Uh, so there's a lot of guys that 2021 is their last year. Some of these guys are guaranteed to get a contract. I'm sure Tredavious is getting a contract. Um... Micah Hyde, maybe. He's 30 years old, though, so maybe not. Uh, EJ Gaines is 28. Harrison Phillips is only 24. Quentin Jefferson is 27. So a lot of these guys. But salary cap issues. Even if you look at it and go, oh, they're all getting contracts. Okay, well, how are you paying for it? Especially with this pandemic and the problems with the salary cap. So this is just kind of framing what we have. And then finally, what I wanted to do was look at just the team itself, right? So Josh Allen, I'm not the biggest believer in Josh Allen. If you look at uh, PFF, for example, his rookie year, he was 27th out of 38. This past year, they graded him 30th out of 37, 65 and 63 overall grades, which is barely average, and he's barely even making the top 32. In other words, they're grading him out as basically the worst, one of the worst quarterbacks in football for the last two years. I'm not really looking to replace him. I think um, we're probably going to get I, I, I tend to believe the Bills are going to win the division. And when you get that far into it, first of all, you're not probably going to get a lot of great quarterback prospects at the end of the first round. And then secondly, you kind of want to just build around him because there's so many things that we can add to kind of push this thing forward. And, and you know, maybe he's going to take a step now that we have Stephon Diggs or whatever. And we got Diggs and we've got Brown, um, neither of which are, well, John Brown is up for a contract and he's 30. But we've got Stephon Diggs now. The One of the bigger issues I'm looking at here is the offensive line. We've got uh, Deion Dawkins, who's a pretty solid left tackle, but Spain and Winters and Ford was just abysmal. And, and I'm not opposed to getting a new right tackle, but, I mean, it was about as bad as you can get for him. Run blocking, pass blocking, he just it was not good at much of anything. And also Mitch Morse, um, not the worst in the world, but kind of, he's one of those guys where it's fine if we just hang on to him. But at the same time, if we happen to find somebody that's better, I'm not opposed to that. So, whatever. But the guards are terrible. The right tackle is just the worst. But maybe we want to give them a little bit of time to, to figure it out. Um, the tight end group, if I can quickly get to that. Um, not a lot to work with. Tommy Sweeney might be the only guy in my estimation, but we did, again, we did just draft Dawson Knox. Sweeney was kind of one of those surprise, like, well, where's this guy coming from kind of guys, but Dawson Knox, I think, is the one that the Bills want to be the guy. You know, we just got in the third round recently. Um, Tyler Croft also was a third round guy, but that was in 2015, so we probably have given up at this point. So, it's kind of, it's one of those weird things where you don't want him because we got Sweeney, who seemed talented in a small sample size that we saw him. We've got Dawson Knox, who we believe can be the guy, but Sweeney was a seventh round guy that probably isn't going to be able to maintain that level of talent. Dawson Knox is a third round guy, but he wasn't any good. So I'm not opposed to getting a tight end in any way, shape, or form. Um, defensive line, again, the age is the biggest issue. Ed Oliver, um, as much as we probably like Ed Oliver, he didn't really demonstrate as much as we would probably like. He was graded out 68th out of 118 guys. That obviously is not going to be good enough. Um, if we look at his stats, he did have six sacks. He had 31 pressures, uh, total pressures, five hits, 20 hurries. If you look at his pressure percentage, and that's something if you listen to my podcast, I talk a lot about pressure percentage. Um, 
basically the way that it works is how many times when you tried to get to the quarterback did you get to the quarterback and my baseline is 10 percent 10 percent is just kind of okay you're not terrible if you get into the 12 13 percent you're pretty good and then you get up into the anything above that you know 15 16 17 that's like elite that's aaron donald type territory so if we look at uh Mr. Ed Oliver here, he had 31 pressures, 374 um, attempts. That's 8%. 8% of the time. That's really bad. I mean, that's like, you know, talented nose tackle type levels. So he had a really rough year as a rookie. I'm not saying he's bad, but I'm just trying to look at it and say, uh, you know, I feel like Bills fans really like their defensive line, and I see a lot of problems. I see Hughes, who's getting up in age. I see Trent Murphy, who's getting up in age. I see Ed Oliver, who hasn't really gotten to that point he needs to get to yet. Um, the linebackers, I think, are an absolute mess. The, the problem is, again, we got Tremaine Edmonds. I, there's a real problem with bad drafting, in my opinion, and I, I, you know, I'm sorry if you're upset by that, but it puts you in a bind to where you don't want to give up on a 16th overall pick in Tremaine Edmonds, but he's bad. He's bad at football. He's maybe a decent enough run defender. He's just not what we want, and Klein is just an absolute joke, and Matt Milano is not any good. So the linebackers are terrible. Hyde and Poyer at safety, I think, are, are talented, but Poyer's getting up into 30, and he's extremely volatile. Sometimes he's good, sometimes he's bad. Micah Hyde is fantastic, but again, he's getting into 30 years old. Are we going to give him another contract? Are we going to try to get any younger? And then cornerback is a big question mark because Tredavious White, as great as he is, he had his best year, in, from what I can see, as a rookie. So obviously he's going to stick around, but... Is that it? Is that all we have is Tredavious White, who, you know, maybe flashed early on and, and we don't see anything beyond that? Levi Wallace, I mean, he's young, but he's an undrafted free agent. He had a great rookie year. We keep him out there. Do we really want an undrafted free agent and Levi Wallace to be the reason we don't draft again? And then we've got Teron Johnson, who was a fourth round pick. Again, solid rookie season, took a big step back. These are just the things that I'm seeing, not being a Buffalo Bills fan. Again, if you disagree, let me know. If I'm missing a guy, hey, what about this guy that was out for injury? Whatever. But, you know, again, Josh Norman probably going to be gone. Um, you know, Saran Neal. I mean, none of these guys that I can see are overtly talented. Uh, one other thing that I want to check if I can get there quickly. Hopefully my editing skills will make this look like I got there quickly, although I probably did not. So the here's here's where people get mad at me because I'm I'm laying out all these things and people are gonna say yeah well we were second in points and third in yards I'm talking about the the defense fantastic defense and I get all that you, you you've got a great defense I'm just looking at the pieces right it's the same thing like with the Kansas City Chiefs that is the worst defense I've ever seen in my life in terms of talent they got one guy on the defensive line Chris Jones that's really talented they got an edge rusher that's wildly overrated that they massively overpaid for in terms of his production and his play the the point is I can see it right Tredavious is solid Hyde is solid Poyer is solid you got two great edge rushers Oliver is growing and all that kind of stuff but I'm seeing disaster because you've got a lot of guys that aren't doing good enough and I'm, I'm sure you got a great defensive coordinator and a great scheme that these guys can operate in but you start losing a couple pieces and this thing can fall apart quickly that's kind of where I'm at so again a lot of people are going to be mad at me we just need offense stop talking about defense just get offense we're going to work on the offense for sure but I can't leave this as it is I can't leave these linebackers here like this this is not good man it's not good I can't do it and, and we got to start worrying about guys like replacing Hyde or getting some additional corners possibly so that's where I'm at and possibly you don't like that that's fine there's a lot to work on here. There's a lot. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. With the 21st overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Trey Smith, offensive guard, Tennessee. Now, I talked a lot about the offensive line. First of all, the offense clearly is a bigger need than the defense. If we're going to go far... It's going to be because we built up the offense, although we do have some things to look at on defense. Anyways, um, I think offensive tackle is an option. But again, Cody Ford, I, I think we, I want to at least see him for one more year. Now, now the, the thing is, by the time this draft happens, we will have seen him. So 
that's what makes it tricky. I don't know what, what the conclusion of that was. But also, the only real tackle would have been uh, Samuel Cosme, and we probably would have had to trade up to get him, and obviously we're not doing that right now. Um, so really it's just a matter of we got to build up this offensive line. Obviously I want to help our quarterback as well as try to get this running game going a little bit more. So Trey Smith, I think, although guard isn't my favorite thing to do in the first round, I do think it could be the most impactful thing, especially when we have so many needs along the offensive line. Again, at the very least, we have two guards that are just not working out. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to upgrade our center and probably tackle if, if that uh, becomes available. With the second pick in the, uh, nope, with the 53rd pick in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Chaz Surratt, linebacker, UNC. Now, again, I really hate to do this with Tremaine just sitting there, and, and hopefully he has that third year kind of a breakout deal. Um, but I'm just, I can't really wait anymore. We got to find somebody that can really be a solid linebacker. Now, here's the other thing to consider. As I said, if there's one thing Edmonds does really well, it's 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 a run defender, right? He's, he's a big, strong, solid player. Um, he can be sort of a thumper, whereas Chaz Surratt is like 230 pounds. He's more of a rangy sideline to sideline. So you get that sort of compliment, whereas Tremaine can be sort of your middle linebacker. Maybe Chaz Surratt can be sort of the weak side linebacker. So I'm not replacing him. But we are trying to overall upgrade the position group, which I just don't think has much talent anywhere. Um, so we've got Chaz, we've got Tremaine, who hopefully takes a step, and then you know we have whatever it is we have. But it's it's a, it's similar to the offensive line. It's one step in the direction of upgrading several pieces in that group. With the 85th pick in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Chris Rumpf, edge rusher, Duke. Now, again, I understand we need offense more than defense, and I understand you got edge rushers, but I genuinely believe by the conclusion of the 2021 season, it's going to be A.J. Epinesa and nobody. I, I just, you know, we'll see if anybody gets an extension, but... I'm looking at a team that's that's got two solid edge rushers that are both going to be gone by 2022. So this will give Chris one opportunity to sit behind A.J. Epinesa and Jerry Hughes and learn how to do stuff. But, you know, we're looking at, you know, Daryl Johnson, who is an undrafted free agent. Uh, we got uh, Mike Love, who is a free agent. We got, I, don't, I mean, Mario Addison, if we decide to even keep him, but he's going to be 35 years old. I mean, it just, we got to add some youth here. So I know it's not what everybody wants because we want to just win a Super Bowl today. But again, you also need to make sure that you're not a garbage team for a very long time. And if you don't have edge rushers, and if it's just AJ Epinesa and an undrafted free agent as your edge rushers, this isn't going to work out too well. So... You know, again, we're, this is the 2021 draft. 2020 already happened. We've got to look into the future a little bit. we got to figure out how we win. And we can't just assume that in 2021 and 2022, we're just going to maintain this elite level defense no matter what. And we just have to fix the offense. No, the, the defense is going to erode like everything else. Things erode over time. Guys get older. Guys lose out. Guys don't have their, their contracts go bye-bye. You know, Matt Milano probably won't even be here. Um... Again, trained at Tra Tremaine Edmonds is going to be looking for another contract. Are they going to pay him? What are they going to pay him? Tyler Matakevich. Are they going to pay him? Pay him what? I don't, you know, guys go bye-bye. That's all I can say. And we have to be there to replace them. Otherwise, we're just playing with a bunch of undrafted free agents, pretending that the Buffalo Bills magic and always having a good defense no matter what will be there. We just got to stack offense and we can't play that game. That's all I'm saying. With the 137th pick in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Drafts via the Las Vegas Raiders, the Buffalo Bills select Trey Hill, interior offensive line, Georgia. Now, he is a center for Georgia. He's going to come in and compete as a center slash guard. Again, I don't hate the center that you have. He's fine, but I, I am not opposed to the possibility of moving on right um beyond that we're, we're losing a lot of guys along the interior and as we look in the later rounds there's no guarantee these guys are going to be starters so when we look at daryl williams evan boehm 
uh, Brian Winters, John Feliciano, these guys possibly being gone, maybe a couple of them stay. We're getting real thin, so it's a matter of upgrading talent as well as finding um, solid backup players. So at this point, hopefully we can put him at guard, and then we'll have um, you know Trey Smith at guard. We'll have our center in Mitch Morse, and then we'll have um, Trey Hill at guard. And that'll be kind of what it is. But again, if Trey Hill can replace the center we have, let's just go ahead and do it. With the 149th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Ambry Thomas, cornerback, Michigan. Again, we're, we're hitting on defense quite a bit here, but that is... It's the strength of the team, and it needs to stay that way. Again, we've got Tredavious White, who is a solid corner, and we have what outside of that? Who, who have we drafted recently that um, means we don't need to draft a cornerback? We did not draft a single cornerback in 2020. We drafted Jaquan Johnson in the sixth round of 2019. We got Teron Johnson in the fourth round of 2018 the last time we invested heavily in a corner and that, this isn't even a heavy this is a late fifth round pick so it's still just kind of barely giving anything to that position the last time was Tredavious White in 2017 in the first round um and so again we're looking at cornerback Josh Norman probably gone Saran Neal uh and Tredavious White are looking for contracts after this year Levi Wallace is possibly gone um and we don't, who else do we have? Isaiah Brown and Dane Jackson? What What is our cornerback group at this point? We don't have a lot of people there. We need more people there. And again, I, I, I wish we had 15 first round picks. I would love to invest a first round pick in this position, but we only have so many picks. And so now that we're in the fifth round, I, I have to take a swing. If for no other reason than we just need bodies at the position. You know, we need at least three guys to be on the field at the same time. And at that point, we got like one backup. If we're one injury away from catastrophe. So, again, not as exciting as we would hope, right? It's not that piece that's going to launch us into the Super Bowl, but it's the fifth round. What do you want from me? Finally, with the 181st pick in the sixth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Ben Cleveland, offensive guard, Georgia. Again, you understand why. Look... Part of the problem is we don't have a lot to work with here. We've got our first, second, and third round picks, and then we have two fifths and a sixth. What I got out of this draft was an upgraded offensive line. One way or another, this offensive line will be better. So we've got Allen, we've got Stephon Diggs, we've got our running backs, although that was possibly an option that I considered. We've got we've invested enough that that needs to be able to work. Now that we have an offensive line, we can protect our quarterback, we can give him time, which is beneficial because he likes to launch the ball down the field, Stephon Diggs likes to get far down the field. If that's going to happen, he's going to need time to throw. We get that, we get the run game going, we've kind of dabbled in getting these tight ends working again. Maybe we could have invested in that, but of what we've done, hopefully something pans out. So we've got the wide receiver, the quarterback, the offensive line, the running back, and the tight end. But the biggest thing on top of, of fixing this offensive line is maintaining the defense. And I know that's probably not the direction a lot of Bills fans want to go. We got a defense. Yeah, but that's not just a reality in the universe, right? We have a good defense, and we need to keep a good defense. We were number two in points allowed in 2019. I want to make sure we're number two in 2020, 2021, 2022. And I don't know if Chaz Surratt is going to be the answer, but we're going to have to keep adding pieces because Micah Hyde is not going to be here forever. Um, again, Murphy and Hughes are, are probably gone by 2022. Uh, one of them might not even be playing in 2021. There's no guarantee Ed Oliver becomes the next elite um, defensive tackle. He hasn't been yet. Tremaine, Ad, you know, we, we don't, you get it, right? I don't need to explain it all over again, but those were sort of my two goals. And I, again, I wish I had 15 more picks because I'd love to address some other things. You know, I'd maybe take another swing at fullback, running back, tight end, wide receiver, all these different things. But if I only have a handful of picks, the offensive line is number one priority. And then maintaining this defense would have been number two. So that's it. 
Anyways, that's it for the Buffalo Bills. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, let me know in the comment section not only what you think of the picks, but what you think of this format. Should I just shut my mouth and get to the picks, or should we do the sort of conversational uh, look at the Buffalo Bills prior to? Let me know that kind of stuff. Otherwise, please subscribe to this channel. Hit the little bell notification so you never miss another video. This is not the last Bills mock. We're going to be doing one either next month or the month after. Once every month-ish or so, we'll be ripping through each team. Um, otherwise, that's it, and we'll catch you next time.